It's still Texas King, but we've done some different things. I think every decision we ended up making was deliberate, which is like, I'd say the first time, at least for me, like a lot of ideas I had got a chance to see the light of day because they weren't stupid ideas this time around, you know? So like, I think sometimes I didn't have deliberate reasons for wanting things on past records or in other recordings and that's why they never made it into the record or whatever. Kind of tried to set out to do more with this EP as opposed to, um, you know, some previous stuff is have it feel more like, you know, like the live energy. I think these songs are really good. We really poured everything we got into them. And, you know, I think these are songs you're gonna like and you're gonna like them for a long time. Well, I think that there's something to be said about something that holds up over time. And say, for example, Small Towns, which made the EP, like, yeah, we've been playing that song for four years, easy. And we had stopped playing it live. We had put it, put it in our back pocket. And as the theme of the EP is changes, like, I was like, I don't think there's any reason to count out any of these songs because we can always change them. And so that's what happened with Small Towns is a perfect example. It's, still kind of the same, people will remember it, people will hear it and be like, oh yeah, I remember this one. But to me, and to Phil, and to Colin, and to Melvin, it's like, oh, this is a completely different tune now. The writing process for this particular little album, it actually goes way back and through a lot of phases, where uh, you know some of the songs that we had written when we were selecting uh, which songs to pick for this album, some of those songs we had written back in like 2000, I want to say even 17 or 18. We had a bunch of songs written. Like we, over the course of sound checks, you know, just like sit, like demoing song ideas. Some some songs were years old. Some of them were brand new. Like Strange Life, because Jordan lives in Vancouver and the pandemic, Strange Life was written over the phone and in the internet. <laughs> so I would send him drum beats. Well, he would send me what the vibe was. And I'd play a drum beat. Do you like it like this? And he'd be like, okay. Uh, change this and you know, we go with that. I was in BC and we had to put out a record and I, like I said earlier, there were some songs I didn't want to lose or forget about. So we kind of had a list of like, I think, I think it was like 14 songs demoed and some of them were demoed, had like multiple incarnations and were uh, demoed multiple times. And then we sent the, uh, all those songs to Pete who uh, produced the EP and he kind of helped us sift through and, and pick the best songs and pick the ones that, like, he, that caught his ear the most. And then from there, working with him to just like refine those songs and refine those ideas. Um, some songs changed only a little bit from the demos and some songs changed almost completely. For me, it had to be Pete. Everything was done for a reason. Everything was questioned. Everything was passed through that filter of, is this serving the song? And that's what Pete offered. We trusted him. There was there was going to be no one else that we would trust like that. I don't think. Pete was awesome, man. He uh, he had a true vision for how this EP should sound. It was just really inspiring to work with him. To work with somebody so focused. He also produced the Flatliners record, Inviting Light, and there's so many bangers on that one. So just the fact that we got to work with him on it, it was just I don't know. I was really happy. Yeah, we, we've been bugging him for a long time to, uh, to produce some Texas King music, and so he finally agreed. We convinced him to, to come on board, and uh, just having, having his opinion as like that, that fifth guy in the room was really good because he's someone that we all really respect. Even if he's, he gave us a note that maybe we didn't want to hear or that maybe at first we didn't agree with some of the things he was like bringing up, it was like everyone was down to, to try it because it's coming from someone that we really respect musically and also like a friend. And We did a couple pre-production sessions with them. When we got to the studio on night one and we got all set up, we got sounds, we took one song and deleted everything. And we just rebuilt it from the ground up. He, and he would sit there with his clipboard and he'd be writing notes and he just was thinking about the song from not like the band's position, but he was like, he had an entire vision for every song. And that was like super important. We've done lots of recording in London 
Um, so we wanted to come to the Sugar Shack just because it was someplace we had never we had never recorded here before. Um, there's a, you know a few studios in London we've recorded at, at most of them. It's a smaller, more intimate space, which I think lent itself to what we wanted to do with this EP, making it a little more like raw and a little more live sounding. Colin is really, he has, he brings a lot of the creative spark. Like he and Jordan, I, I've always thought were like a really good compliment because Jordan will bring the bones of an idea to the table, whether it be almost fully fleshed out or whether it just be chords and some, some melodies. Colin is always able to bring something new to the table that is like a maybe like a really hooky guitar melody or a cool arrangement idea. He also had a very much like Pete, he could see a vision for the song and he, he really wanted the story and lyrics to pop out when it came to music or when it came to the songs. I, th I love this about calling, he's always seeking for something that's gonna brighten the song. So if it's a part he's playing, has to make it better than it makes it. It's not about, look at me, listen to me. He's listening to the song. He'll say, well, I'm not gonna sing backup vocals till the second chorus because it gives it more lift there. He'll say, this part needs to come not just in the intro, but also in the chorus. And it's like, great idea. Phil, my rhythmic counterpart in life, one of the best bass players uh, I've ever played with. This guy writes hooks like on the bass. It's crazy. Like I love his bass line in uh, "Not Myself" in the chorus. Yeah, and Phil's also very good at like the song needs to go in a certain way. Like if if you know we're wanking on an idea, Phil can be very much like, okay, that doesn't really work in this context. Let's bring it back. This is what's going to sound best. Phil. We always call him the battery. He's the energizer battery of the band. He's the dad of the band. He's, he's the man. I look to Phil for countless things. <laughs> Phil likewise, like the rhythm section, blew through their parts. Something that people may hear or may not hear, but I want to make sure is said by me, is that Melvin made the most adjustments out of us all for this record. And I don't even know how he processes all the thoughts he has to think to play it the way he plays it now. But like, if you've ever seen this live, it's usually a big, and it's like he's changed the style of his drumming to, like I said earlier, serve the song. And I think that that's what we all tried to do, but I would say Melvin had to change the most. Yeah, Melvin's a, a rock solid player. He came in and he executed so well. Uh, man, he was rock solid. Is very, driven musically like I respect him a lot as a musician because he's he's the type of musician that's always working on his craft to get better uh, he's never just like satisfied with like being a good drummer or like you know being like here he's like always trying to figure out how we can like get better uh, so I respect him a lot for that but like yeah in terms of personality he's definitely a little bit of the clown that makes us all laugh Listening to Jordan record some of the vocal takes for specific songs were like, I was getting goosebumps and stuff. <laughs> like, it was uh, fantastic. He crushed it. I was calling out for help. He had a really good attitude like working with Pete because I think Pete really uh, just kept pushing for, for not better, but just like different. Trying to like take our sound somewhere new with him and. Yeah, Jord was like, moved forward with it, con continued pushing the ball and yeah, crushed out what he's saying. He's one, he's one of those people that has an, a natural, like a, just like a natural music gift and ability. I think like no one that I've met can think of hooks uh, or they, they, it comes so easily to him. Like, no, there's, I don't know anyone who, who can come up with hooks as quickly and as good as he can. It's, uh, yeah, it's crazy. And, you know, and on this, this recording, I think, like, Pete was probably the hardest on Jordan and pushed him the most, uh, whether it be lyrically, whether it be uh, vocal performances, you know, any of that type of stuff. And, like, Jordan really, I think, took the criticism well, as well as anyone could. And, like, I think he's better for it. I think, you know, the performances that he did on the CP, I think, uh, speak volumes. And then Jordan obviously brings the lyrics, he brings the songs. 
I think fans can expect uh, six timeless songs. I think these songs are really good. We really poured everything we got into them. The EP is, yeah, every song is different. Yeah, you can expect a different, a different sound. And I think that the songs are going to translate really well live. I'm really excited to play these songs live because I think throughout the whole process, we've definitely been keeping in mind touring these songs. That it was a team effort and we all put this together and we're all very proud of it and we hope you love it. That's all I want to say. 